The hook I'm going to use is a Sala, it's a size 7 in this case. So it's probably as big as I would tie it on a, on a hook. Uh, it's a great pattern to have. But to tie the blue charm, the thread I'm going to be using is a uni thread and it's an 8 in black. Simply start at the eye of the hook, put down a layer of thread. Now I'm only bringing it sort of like halfway, and then I'm going to get some oval silver tinsel, which is going to be part of the tag. I'm just going to catch it on a flat surface of the, the double. It's the only time I'll do this. I'll rarely tie on a bare surface, but in this case it'll never pull out, and plus that's a flat surface that gives it all the grip you need. Now all you do is take your thread down till really the thread's in line with the point of the hook and then touch and turns with the oval tinsel take it slightly around the bend about four turns and then bring the oval tinsel between the hooks and underneath. This will hold the tag, give it protection. Now at this point I'm going to cut this the full length of the body which is there reason that will help to keep it nice and even and with no lumps. For the tail, we tie in some gold pheasant crest. In this case I've actually dyed it fluorescent yellow just to give it that extra wee bit kick. It certainly shows up. So tie it down. Just on the top. Lengthwise you're looking probably at least the length of the body. And then with the excess. Now I just leave that like that. Now for the rib I'm using the same oval tinsel, a nice, it's number 14 Beniers, which is like a, a small oval tinsel, two or three to catch. Okay, and watch the length of the body. Now for the body itself I'm just using a black rayon floss. Catch it. I'm just going to catch it on the top. And then at this point, just take your time, tying everything in, tail, rib, and your floss. Just take your time all the way up. Extra strong fly if you do this. A bit too far, so I'm taking away the excess there. You've got to leave about 3mm at least for the, for the wing and for the hackle. Then, just open out the floss slightly with your fingers, just run your fingers through it and then touch and turns, bring it up as neat as you can to this point here, cross your thread secure it down with a good 4 or 5 turns or so and take away the excess now bring your rib up through Looking around about five turns. One, two, three, four, five, that's plenty. Catch you underneath. And again, four or five turns to secure it in. Take away the excess. And then tidy up. Got to tidy up. Come back down. For the hackle, you could use two or three types of hackles, but in this case I've got the Chinese. Obviously dyed blue. Well, like a kingfisher blue, it's quite dark, but it's actually a nice colour. It's a colour that works well. You could go lighter, you could use a teal blue, which is slightly lighter. Now, what I'm going to do is look hackle length. You're looking, if you put the stem up against the hook like that, you'll see where the tips are to the, the barb. You could go shorter if you wish, but it's entirely up to yourself. It depends on the style that you like. You see, I've tied them all different styles, so... But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to tie it in by the tip. Fold back some of the fibres, the point, going forward with the eye, then I'm going to tuck it back. Makes it extremely strong, it'll not pull out, it's got to break off. Take away the excess. And then... I'm going to fold the feather as I wind. I'll fold the fibres back as I go and do a turn in front of one another building up your hackle just take your time holding the feathers the fibres as you go 
Basically what I do is hold it like that and then bring my hand round. I prefer to actually wind the hackle with my hand instead of using hackle pliers. Sometimes I do use it, but majority of times I prefer to do it that way. Now, three or four to catch it in, and then again I can fold this back. Now, when you break away, hackle point or cut it away, it's entirely up to you. Now you can bring these hackle fibres down either side, give it like a middle shed, just bring it down. Gets to sit better. Now, the difference, I'll show you, this is a a feather wing version. Sprung's mild and then and now you actually use widgeon for the sides. In this case I'm going to be using this is grey squirrel, just natural grey squirrel. So the hair wing is more popular than the full feather wing. Get your length just slightly by the ends of the tail. If you bring the fibres 90 degrees from the stem, you'll see that they start to line up. Once you've got enough, bring them out, hold the tips, come in, and trim away. Now at this point what I do is I hold the points of the hair and take away any broken ends or any fluff that I don't, you don't really need excess bulk. Just take them out of the way. To get the length of your light, which is there. Now what I do here is hold it, see where I'm going to cut it, and get as close to the, eye, the head as possible and then cut the thread into the, the cut ends three or four times now what will happen when you wind in there you'll slightly bring the hair to the side just use your nail to bring it back up and then tighten up nice and tight all the way down and then building the thread from the front up and over and work your way down onto the hair keeping it really tight. Now keeping the thread tight, don't let the, th the bobbin go. Get straight in and wet finish. Good four, five turns. Trim away your excess. And there we are. And that there is your, your hair wing blue charm. An excellent fly, it's fished all over the world. Very good obviously for the salmon, but as well, certainly takes sea trout to a couple of coats of varnish or so. Now I'm putting, using a brush here to apply the varnish, which I like to do. Use a needle, whatever you like. And there we are. And that's your famous blue charm.